أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تحسبن الله غافلا عما يعمل الظالمون إنما يؤخرهم يوم ليوم تشخص فيه الأبصار هذه حارة يا جماعة هذا مسك حار الحمد لله أنا مسك في الكاف الحمد لله حسنا الله عليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يوم ينفق في الصور فتأتون أفواجا وفتحت السماء فكانت بوابا وسيرت الجبال فكان السرابا إن جهنم كانت مرصادا للطاغين ما با لبثين فيها أحقابا لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا إلا حميما وغساقا جزاء وفاقا إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا وكذبوا بآياتنا كذابا وكل شيء إن أحصيناه كتابا فذوقوا فلن نزيدكم إلا عذابا إن للمتقين مفازا حدائق وأعنابا وكواعب أترابا وكأسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا جزاء من ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شيء اتخذ إلى ربه مابا إنا أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة العالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا We have approximately 30 minutes to compress this lecture so please, inshallah ta'ala, sit down and lend me your ear for the next 25 to 30 minutes. It might well be, inshallah ta'ala, the most important thing that you've ever heard. And Allah knows best. Not because I'm saying it, because of all of these scholars and these great statements that they uttered and some of the statements of Allah Azza wa Jal and the practices of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want every single one of you guys to walk away with Practical coping mechanisms when we are dealing with hardships and difficulties. We all go through hardships and difficulties, my brothers and my sisters. Even Ikrima, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, was from the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas. He says, Ma min mu'min, illa wa yafrah wa yahzan. There's not a believer except that at times he's going to go through sadness. And there's times where he's going to rejoice, right? Times like this and times like that. The advice that he gave was, when you're feeling sad, 
Be patient. And when things are going well for you, be thankful. Ibn al-Qayyim has a whole kitab, explanation called Madaj Salikin. Right? Where he talks about two halves. The half of patience and the half of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me start off this lecture, my brothers and my sisters, with this statement of Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi. I know, and you know, my brothers and my sisters, that at times we go through difficulties and hardships, which we really struggle to deal with. I go through hardships. Ustaz Yahya goes through hardships. All of the other mashayikh that deliver lectures, they go through hardships, difficulties, and challenges of life. Right? I haven't even asked him what he is going through or what he may have gone through in the past, but I know he goes through stuff. What did I share? A shahid min al kalam, my brothers and my sisters, this is something that is bound to happen. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi says, Al masa'ibu ni'mah. I'll say that again. Al masa'ibu ni'mah. Trials and tribulations and hardships are indeed a blessing. I'll say that again. Al masa'ibu ni'mah. The trials and tribulations. The hardships that one goes through, it is indeed a blessing. You know what he then says? لِأَنَّهَا مُكَفِّرَاتٌ لِلْذُنُوبِ He begins to list a number of reasons as to why masaib is a ni'mah. Why trials and tribulations are indeed a blessing. And I'm really hoping you guys write this stuff down. Don't just come to the lectures, my brothers and my sisters, hoping to hear a reminder, putting it through one ear and then taking out the other. Up until recently, I was making dua for Steve Jobs, who died when? 2007, I believe, or 11. Are you allowed to make dua for a disbeliever? No, you can't. But Abu Taim was making dua for him up until recently. Someone put up their hand and said, Ustad, Steve Jobs is dead. And I didn't know that. Why was I making dua for him? Because of these iPhones. You have Galaxy, uh, huh? But because of these iPhones that has the notes page, I still have notes from maybe back in 2012. iCloud saved us, right? Every time we lost the phone or it drowned, iCloud was there. Even now, some of the points that I'm mentioning or statements are from maybe may, many years ago. So he says, because it expiates your sins. وَتَدْعُوا إِلَى الصَّبْرِ وَيُثَابُ عَلَيْهَا And you are invited now to be patient. مَا أُعْطِي أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً أَوْ سَعَ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ أَوْ خَيْرَ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, you haven't been granted or gifted with anything more greater and more better for you than patience. So he invites you now to be patient, to hold yourself together, and you will be rewarded for it. And then look what he says. وَتَقْتَضِ الْإِنَابَةَ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلُّ وَالذُّلَّ لَهِ It causes one now to return back to Allah. A test that brings you closer to Allah, my brothers and my sisters, is better than a blessing that causes you to go far, far away. How many people do I know that became rich, but then they're gone, brothers and sisters, while maybe we're sitting around wishing that we could have what they have. So he says, it causes one now to turn back to Allah and to be humble. Once upon a time, I ran into this brother, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, sitting with him made me feel so small. Right? And I was thinking, what's wrong with him? Just because he's got a bit of money, he's making people feel like that. Fast forward a couple of years, he sends me a GoFundMe page. He goes, please, Akhi, help me. Right? I'm going through troubles. I'm stuck. Where he was, where he now is. So he's saying it causes a person now to be what? Humble. Where you find yourself in a state where you're so small in front of Allah. This is because of the masaib. And we're not done yet. He then says, It causes one to turn away from the creation. And this is so crucial. The way we are as human beings, we tend to what? We tend to always run to the creation. 
Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to be in a state where you don't turn to anyone except Him. Because only Allah can help you in this matter that you're in. No one can do anything for you. Up until you're just left with Allah, just you and Him, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Right? And the statements are many, my brothers and my sisters. I've already taken 10 minutes. Also Ibn Al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, ما كثر الله عبده المؤمن إلا ليجبره ولا منعه إلا ليعطيه when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times right tests you and you feel broken he doesn't do that except that he wants to bring you back up stronger and he doesn't hold back something from you that you really want except because Allah wants to give you that which is better right وَلَبْتَلَاهُ بِخَفَاءِ النَّاسِ أَوْ بِجَفَاءِ النَّاسِ إِلَّا لِيَرُدَّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَوْ إِلَّا لِيَرُدَّهُ إِلَيْهِ And sometimes people treat you badly. Right? People are mistreating you only for you to return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for you when He goes through these trials and tribulations that Allah has decreed for you. Right? And subhanAllah, you know, it's many, even Ibn Al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, لَوْ لَا مِحَنُ الدُّنْيَا وَمَصَائِبُهَا لَا أَصَابَ الْعَبْدَ مِنْ أَدْوَاءِ الْكِبِرِ وَالْعُجْ وَالْفَرْعَنَةِ وَخَسْوَةِ الْقَلْبِ If it wasn't for all of these trials and tribulations, you know what would happen, my brothers and my sisters? One would be walking on the face of this earth with arrogance, thinking he's something. He would start picking up all of these traits. والفرعنة. He even says, Fir'auni characteristics that you will end up picking up. I've seen so many who thought they were gangsters, right? They needed their legs to be broken in order for them now to be humble. And now he's sitting at home. But before, he was walking around thinking that he's on cloud nine. Right? So he says, if it wasn't for these trials and tribulations, one would be afflicted with the diseases of arrogance. Self-amazement, he would pick up traits of Fir'aun. And also what? Hardness of the heart. We are humbled, brothers and sisters. And then he says, وَمِن رَحْمَةِ أَرْحَمِ الرَّحِمِينَ From the mercy of the one that's most merciful. أَنْ يَتَفَقَّدَهُ فِي بَعْضِ الْأَحْيَانِ That at times, he makes him go through these hardships in order to keep his feet on the ground. Right? We all need that, brothers and sisters. I need that, Ustaz Yahya needs that, everyone else here needs that. To keep our feet on the ground, guys. I don't think any of us wants to meet Allah, you have a mustard grain of kibir in your heart. So five things, my brothers and my sisters, and I hope inshallah ta'ala we can take this away. These are practical matters, right? That will help, inshallah ta'ala, every single one of us cope with these difficulties and hardships that we experience. Two of them are before the calamity strikes. And one, uh, two of them are before the calamity strikes, and the rest is once it strikes. So are these two? I'm really hoping you guys are going to memorize it. Right? Please, guys, don't come to my lectures just wanting to listen. Come with a pen and paper. I'm sick and tired of giving lectures. You know why? Because what it does is it boosts your Iman and it's just going to come crashing back down again. If we don't continue to seek knowledge, these notes help us to enhance ourselves. Right? Number one. At tawheed at tawheed brothers and sisters. What does a tawheed mean? In a nutshell, to learn the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over you. Ifradullah bima yakhtassu bihi. To single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which is exclusive to him. And when I say this, my brothers and my sisters, I'm not referring to having these online debates. I'm talking about learning about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which we then internalize. Which become part of our lives. Wallahi, if we learned, and by the way, this is the only source 
of information that we have of Allah Azza wa Jal. If we really learned who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, a lot of how we react, a lot of sins that we do, right? A lot of the fear that we experience wouldn't take place. <laughs> my brothers and my sisters, let me ask you guys a question. Is there anyone here who's maybe found a sister to get married to? Sorry, sister, I'm gonna ask the brothers. Huh? Anyone here? Wait, what? Jackson. <laughs> who's engaged? <laughs> By the way, if the brother puts his hand up, put your, say Allahumma barik. Don't give him your evil eye. Huh. Who here is engaged, guys? Quickly. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Let me ask you, why did you pick her? Huh? Sorry? She's got religion. Close to religion. She's close to her religion. Excellent. What else? Of course, she's good looking as well. Allahumma barik. <laughs> And maybe she's good to her parents. So many of the different characteristics and traits that stood out for you, which caused you to love her, Princess Charming. Sahih. He chose her over everyone else. That's what he done. He chose her over everyone else. Because of all these characteristics and traits. Right? Not that I'm trying to compare Princess Charming to Allah Azza wa my brothers and my sisters, in any way, shape or form. But how do we expect to love Allah Azza wa when we know absolutely nothing about Him? From the common questions that reaches me is, brother, right? Why is it that I don't feel that connection with Allah? I don't feel the sweetness of my ibadah, why? Why do I feel like that? My brothers and my sisters, do we even know who we're worshipping? Or what we're worshipping? Right? He chose her because of all these things that he knew about her. We don't know nothing about Allah Azza wa Jal, my brothers and my sisters. How will there even be love for Allah Jalla fi ula? To give you guys an example, my brothers and my sisters, how? Just knowing who Allah Azza wa Jal is and fulfilling his rights because the moment you know Allah, you will refrain from certain things and you'll start doing certain things. Let me give you guys an example of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. How long do I have? Allahumma sallam sallam. Right? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, once upon a time, my brothers and my sisters, he was patrolling the streets of Medina. And then he got tired, him and his servants, so they began to lean on the wall. You know a wall, we just lean on, he got very tired, so they began to lean on the wall. Did he? As he's leaning on the wall, my sisters especially, please listen up. Please listen up. And likewise, you brothers. He began to hear a conversation between a mother and her daughter. You know what the mother was saying to her? Ya bunayati, O daughter, stand up. Go and mix the water with milk. She said to her mother, don't you know the law that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu passed today, haven't you heard of it? Ah. Then you hear about it, she goes, what did he pass? As a law, that milk should not be mixed with water. The reason why she wants to mix it with water, so it becomes more and they can make more money. You know what Ibn Qayyim says, guys? At-tawheedu yaftahu lil'abdi bab al-khayr wa-sururr. Having Tawheed, knowing Allah, it opens the door of what? Huh? It opens the door of goodness and happiness. Look what's going to happen right now. She said, oh mother, it's not possible for me to obey Umar ibn Khattab in public and then behind closed doors I disobey him. She said, you are in a place where Umar can't see you. She said, if Umar can't see me, then the Lord of Umar can see everything that I'm doing. Under that blanket, where you have these phones, haram is a fingertip away, both old and young. My brothers and my sisters, my brothers and my sisters. If the people can't see me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see me. A woman who internalized Allah being a raqib and a sami' and al alim, right? So what happens? Umar Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes home. Next morning, 
He lines up all of his children and he says, who from amongst you is ready to get married? Islam puts his hand up. Me, dad. Islam then got married to this woman. This woman who was hidden inside of a house. She was a hidden gem. Sometimes I hear sisters saying, but brother, how are people going to find out about me? Right? So I need to go outside and show myself. Sorry, sisters, please don't take it the wrong way. Right? Let's be honest here. Or I have to display myself, plaster my pictures all over Fitnagram. Right? Or that satanic app of TikTok. Everyone's, inshallah, is going to delete it before you leave this room. A'udhu billahi min TikTok. Don't tell me that's where I got to know you. Right? I don't even have a TikTok account, brothers and sisters. I seek refuge in Allah Azza wa from the app. Ala kulli hal, she was hidden in her home. She had tawheed. She knew who Allah Azza wa was. Right? And he opened doors of goodness and she became happy as well. Isn't that what Ibn Qayyim said? Because of Tawheed, he opens the door of happiness. And he didn't stop there, guys. Isam got married to her. They gave birth to a young woman. This woman eventually got married. And guess who they gave birth to? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Who was the eighth caliphate, by the way, after the Prophet Sallallahu But when the scholars talk about following the rightly guided caliphates, alongside the four, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, they mention also Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. It came out from where? Tawheed. Are you brothers and sisters with me? Right. Them understanding who Allah Azza wa is. Well, I have other incidents as well. The incident that Ibn Rajab mentions, where you have the female Bedouin and the male Bedouin, they were alone together in the desert. Right? And then he tried to flirt with her. He tried to seduce her. And then he saw that she was getting scared. He goes, Mimma takhafin, what are you scared for? La yarana ilal kawakib, the only thing that can see us are the stars. She says to him, Wa aina mukawkibuha. Where is the one who created these stars? Where is the khaliq, the creator of these stars? And he got shook. He got really scared. Right? She instilled it within him, my brothers and my sisters. And examples are many. Because she understood Allah. So these are two ladies that I mentioned, my brothers and my sisters. Two ladies. <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two, my brothers and my sisters. Number two. تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة. Be someone who has a relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when things are going smoothly, when things are going great in your life, right? And perhaps when you're in that very very dark place, when you're in that very very dark place, my brothers and my sisters, right? the relief will come quickly. What's also my evidence? Yunus والسلام, who was stuck in that whale. Allah says, فَلَوْ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمْ يُبْعَثُونَ I have 10 minutes. It's wrong. Are you guys with me? If it wasn't for him, when things were going smoothly in his life, he used to be someone that used to do a lot of tasbih. Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. He used to do the right thing. So when things got difficult, even though he was in the darkness of the night, the darkness of the sea, and the darkness of the stomach of that whale, three darknesses, it spat him out. Right? It will work in your favor when things start going wrong, my brothers and my sisters. These are two things that we hold on to before the calamity strikes. Then my brothers and my sisters, when the calamity strikes, what are some of the coping mechanisms in dealing with our hardships and trials and tribulations? This is now number three. As-salatu as-salah. 
my brothers and my sisters, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر فزع إلى الصلاة. Whenever he was struck with some difficulty, he would go and run to the prayer. Are you brothers and sisters with me? He would go and run to the prayer. It will help him cope with these difficulties. Our brothers today, the Mashayikh, they spoke about these stories in the Quran. as salah as salah my brothers and my sisters. I can't stress this enough. When the calamity strikes, right? And then you run into the prayer. See how you feel after that. It will really ease the pain that you were experiencing at a time. This is exactly what the Messenger ﷺ would do. He had human characteristics where he would get affected by what the people were saying. Allah tells us, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know, oh Muhammad, that which you are experiencing is causing you a lot of pain. What did Allah tell him? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Glorify your Lord and be from the sajideen, those who prostrate. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ As Allah tells us, seek aid and assistance from that. Right. Number, what number are we on? Four. Tell you guys a little story about Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, "Aladina ida sabatun musibah." Qalu, what did they say? Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. Their response would be, upon being struck with a calamity, Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. What does that even mean? We might say it, but we internalize it. We belong to Allah. And to Him are we going to return, my brothers and my sisters. Deep that for a moment. We are here on borrowed time. Don't get upset at so-and-so passing away. His time came to an end. It's as simple as that. If I borrowed you something and then I said, give it back to me, would you get upset? Allah has us walking on the face of this earth on borrowed time. Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu she said, I heard the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Umm Salama, she had a husband called Abu Salama. Ma min abdin tusibuhu musibah. Fayaqool inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Never are you struck with a calamity. And then one says, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa akhlifli khayran minha. Guys, we should all memorize this dua. Everyone tried to memorize this dua. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati. Reward me for my calamity and replace it with that which is better wa akhlifli khayran minha. Right? Replace it with that which is better. That's true. Um Salama said, when my husband passed away, Abu Salama, yeah. I said to myself, Man khayrun min Abi Salama? Who is better than Abu Salama? Is there anyone that is better than Abu Salama? Who was the companion of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Right? So then I said this dua that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. So what happened? What does the dua say? If you say it, Allah will give you that which is better. And she's thinking to herself, who is better than Abu Salama? Guess what happened? She ended up getting married to the Prophet That's a love story, guys. How romantic. Huh? The calamity that she was struck with, all of a sudden, my sisters and my brothers, it became what? A blessing. You just don't know what is waiting for you, my brothers and my sisters. Sometimes we look at these calamities and think, why is Allah making me go through this? Why, out of all people, has He picked me to go through these troubles? Again, we go back to Tawheed. From the names of Allah is what? Al-Hakim. Alaysa Allahu bi ahkamil hakimin. We all memorize that, Surah Teen. Isn't Allah the most wise? How many a time, guys, have we been in a position where we thought this was the best thing for me? Agreed? And you're thinking I'm missing out. And then years down the line, you think to yourself, 
Subhanallah, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have this today. It happens a lot uh -huh. when you're looking to get married. Sahih? You want Bushra so badly, right? You desperately want her. Just doesn't seem to be happening for you and to make things worse. And I've come across scenarios like this. Your best friend, your best friend, he snatches her from under your nose. Three words. What kind of best friend is he? Huh? You're probably wondering. But it was a blessing in disguise. Years went by, Allah blessed you, right? With a bushra, right? With characteristics and traits that the mind can't imagine. And then you say, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have this today. You should say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa akhlif li khayran minha. Right? How many is that, my brothers and my sisters? It's five. Yes. Or is that four? We're on five now. Number five, my brothers and my sisters. This one's really powerful. You may see it as something very, very light. Right? وَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ Having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what my favorite surah in the Quran is? Does anyone know? Come on guys, half of you guys went. Surah Yusuf. Huh? Surah Yusuf. Oh. Queen Mary, <laughs> Westminster, Bath. Is that what they call it? What's that university called that collaborates with Queen Mary? Bath, sorry, not Bath. Bath. Right? And then the other one in, uh, in West London, what's it called? The one that I went to? It's Big Tape Imperial. Not Imperial. Brunel. Huh? Brunel, that's the one. Yes. Guys, calm down. Right. <laughs> Surah Yusuf is my favorite Surah. What's my favorite benefit from Surah Yusuf? You know what it is, guys? My favorite benefit is when Allah quoted Ya'qub to have said, فَصَبْرٌ Janin. What does that mean? Beautiful patience. When did he say that? The first time he said it was when he lost his most beloved son, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ The aid of Allah is taught in that which you described. He went decades, brothers and sisters, and he was what? Yearning for his beloved son. Paining this loss. Another couple of decades go past, my brothers and my sisters. And then he loses the second most beloved son to him, which is Benjamin or Benjamin. He says it again, فَصَبْرٌ Jamil. But what does he say this time round? This is my favorite benefit, guys. عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا Perhaps now Allah will bring them all back to me. The optimism, the optimism, guys. Is it the first time or the second time? And you're thinking to yourself, most people, when they go through a difficulty, and that difficulty happens again, they say, deja vu. Huh? It's getting more harder. It's more tough now. We begin to lose hope. Alayhi isn't that so? But Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, all of a sudden, optimism. Right? He's got more hope now. He's got better husnul than of Allah. Good thoughts of Allah Azza wa Jal. So what did the scholar say? When you go through hardships and difficulties, and then it intensifies. It gets harder to deal with, it's then. When being relieved is around the corner. It's then when it is what? Around the corner. That's exactly how Yaqub took it, my brothers and my sisters. There is light to the end of the tunnel. Don't think, right, Allah just wants to abandon me. He doesn't like me. Why always me? Like Remember, we mentioned that there are what? Hikam wisdoms behind it. Yeah, complaining again. طيب. Number six now, right? We're number six, huh? Number six. My brothers and my sisters, there's nothing better than easing that pain. We talked about salah, right? I put this as an independent point. So that, inshallah ta'ala, we can pay attention to it and to alert you. Qiyamul Layl. 
standing up in the last third of the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down in a manner that suits his majesty as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said. Where Allah says, يَنزِلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَ كُلَّ لَيْدِنَا سَمَادُ حِينِ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْنِ الْأَخِيرِ مَنْ يَدْعُونِي Who's going to call on to me so I can respond to him? You're alone in the dark, right? Everyone's asleep. No friends, no one else besides you other than yourself and Allah. And you begin to call out. Imam al-Shafi'i says, the dua that you make in that time of the night is like the arrow that doesn't miss its target. The arrow that does not miss its target, my brothers and my sisters. Dua, it is from the greatest cures for your problems. Right? If Bill Gates, you guys know Bill Gates, right? Or oh, let me actually forget him. Huh? Elon Musk. The man who freed the bird. Twitter, right? He freed Twitter, right? Let's see. Elon Musk said to every single one of us, come to me at 3 a.m. Wallahi, there's going to be a line at his door. And if you come, I'll give you X amount of money. We are going to believe him. Sah? We're going to believe him. Because we see what he possesses. Allah al Malik al Dayyan calls out to you while the people are asleep. How can we be asleep? And he comes down, my brothers and my sisters. And he's saying, Whatever you need, let me give it to you. And last but not least, my brothers and my sisters, last but not least, I would have loved to elaborate on each point, but I keep being told to hurry up. Last but not least, and this one is very crucial. It is called being self-critical. Holding yourself to account when things start going wrong in your life. The way we are as human beings. When things go wrong, we are ready to point the finger at everyone except ourselves. Sahih? Everyone's wrong except me. Perhaps maybe tweak that a little bit. And say, I may be going through this because of something that I've done. Let me ask you guys a question. We have a hadith and verses where Allah talks about and where the Messiah some speak about when you go through a trial, it's because Allah loves you. You heard the hadith, right? Inna Allah habba shakhsan if Allah loves an individual, he tests him. But also Allah says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِينَ I'm done guys, yeah? Give me two more minutes. Please lend me your ear and don't distract the people around you. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Never are you struck with a difficulty except it is due to what you have earned with your own hands. How do I know if it's this or if it's that? How do I know if it's the first or the latter? Hi, Jamal. No, who can tell me? Is it the first or the second? Reaction. Huh? He said your reaction. So if it brings you closer to Allah, it means? If it doesn't... Huh, guys, anything else? Yeah. Huh? Not you. Uh, not you. Anyone else? You don't know. She said you don't know. Good. It's very hard to tell. Unless you know exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. My brothers and my sisters. So what do you do? You put yourself in a win-win situation. What is the win-win situation? You raise the possibility that it was because of a sin that you done. And then you repent to Allah. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-muttahir. Allah loves those who keep coming back to Him in repentance, right? And those who are pure. If it was because that Allah Azza wa Jalla loves you, then you've only increased in His love, right? And if it was because of your sin, you've come back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. But what do most people do? They sit around blaming everyone, pointing the finger at others, especially when it comes to marriages, right? There's issues, he's wrong, she's wrong. He's wrong, she's wrong. Maybe you guys are having these problems because of the sins that are happening within your marriage. <laughs> Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, look what he says, right? وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الْعَبْدَ يَقَعُ فِي النَّاسِ إِذَا أَدَوْهُ وَلَا يَرْجُعِ إِلَى نَفْسِهِ بِاللَّوْمِ وَالِاسْتِغْفَارُ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مُصِيبَةُ مُصِيبَةُ الْحَقِقِيَةِ When you see someone after going through a calamity, he begins to retaliate. Guys, guys, the outside. Those outside, please. 
if you see someone now retaliating, after he's going through some trouble or after someone has harmed him, and he doesn't hold himself to account, he's not self-critical, then know this guy has a big problem. However, if he now comes back to Allah, Allah will turn that problem into a blessing for him. <laughs> I have so many examples that I would love to go through of how the righteous of the past, the Salaf, they would be self-critical. They would hold themselves to account when things were going wrong. Right? How many points is this? Probably that. <laughs> It's a khtilaf among scholars. A different opinion. How many is that? Seven. What was number one? <laughs> Tawheed. Number two? Relationship with Allah. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when things are going smoothly. Ta'arafi ila Allah. Number three. Salah number four. Virtues. Saying inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja. Number five. Good thoughts of Allah azza wa jal ma min abdin. Wa huwa yuhsin wa dhanna billahi azza illa a'tahu iya. As Abdullah Mas'ud said. Never does one have good thoughts of Allah except Allah will give it to him. How many is that? Five, right? Number six? The night prayer. And number seven? Stop accountability. Huh? Stop Being self critical of yourself, and that might well be the most important thing that every single one of us need to hear. It's a tough pill to swallow, guys. Things go wrong, go and take a moment out to repent. Maybe it's because of something that I've done. It could be 10 years ago that you didn't repent from. A lot of these points, my brothers and my sisters, I spoke a little bit about it, right? In a lecture, I still haven't given it justice because they keep hurrying me up. Uh, it's called Do Not Be Sad. It's on my channel. The, one of the last videos that was put out. You get a chance, inshallah, to watch that. Tomorrow, like I said, there's a program in West London, South Hall. This is more for people who want to seek knowledge. Five principles, legal maxims that your religion is based on. And of course, boycotting one another and doing tabdi' on one another. This guy is an innovator, that guy is an innovator, huh? that which we hear all the time, right? Tabdi'ing people. We're gonna talk about that inshallah ta'ala. And also after Maghrib, he reminded me white man road masjid. Right. You know the road sounds a bit, huh? It's called white man road masjid, right? White man road masjid inshallah ta'ala, that's after Maghrib. It's called Deen versus Dunya. I hope to see you guys, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow. Right? Jazakum Allah khairan. Wallah, it's so nice to see the place packed, as always. I ask Allah to bless every single one of you guys. If we don't meet again, may Allah reunite us in the hereafter, in the highest part of Al-Jannah. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. Shadu an la ilaha ilaha anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika.